Hi kids! I hope you enjoyed our Christmas series. A very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you and your family again. We are starting a new series called God the Covenant Keeper. It's all about Joseph, his life and how God used him in his big plan. I hope you enjoy watching this series with us. Everybody. My name is Jennifer and welcome to Children's Ministry Online. Happy New Year everyone! We hope that you had a fantastic Christmas holiday. What's something fun that you did during your holiday? You can tell us in the chat section on your screen. Today we're going to start a new series called God the Covenant Keeper. Before Christmas we learned that God makes a covenant with Abraham and his family. God promised to bless the nations through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. One of Jacob's children is named Joseph. And our new series is all about the life of Joseph and how God used him in his big plan. But before we dive into our story, how about we close our eyes and dedicate this time to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you 
for loving us. We pray that you would teach us something new about who you are and who we are. In Jesus' name, amen. It's game time. Are you ready to have some fun? For our game today, we're gonna play a game called, What Will Mike Choose? Our friendly dog, Mike, will have two options on the screen. And you guys at home get to predict what Mike will choose. Are you ready? Let's watch the video. We hope you guys enjoyed that game. Now it's time to worship God. And today we have a brand new song for you. It's called, My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. How many of you believe that we have a great, big God? Why don't you get up on your feet and come sing along with us? Let's worship God together. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God cannot do My God is so big and so strong and so mighty There's nothing my God
must work. God sent his son to live here on the earth. He healed the sick. He made blind men see. Before we get started with our story, let's find out what our big picture question is for the new series. Having a big picture question will help us understand more about what the story can teach us. For the next few weeks, we will be talking about the question, is there anything God can't do? If you listen carefully to your teacher, you might hear the answer. Are you guys ready? Now let's put on our thinking caps and our listening ears and listen to our teacher. Jacob and his family lived in Canaan, the land God had promised to his grandfather Abraham and his family. Jacob had 12 sons, but his favorite son was Joseph. <laughs> Jacob gave Joseph a colorful Ooh. robe. Joseph's brothers saw that Jacob loved Joseph most, and they hated Joseph. One day, Joseph told his brothers about a dream he had. He dreamed that he and his brothers were putting together bundles of grain. Suddenly, Joseph's grain stood up and other bundles bowed down to his. The dream meant that Joseph would rule over his brothers. Joseph's brothers hated Joseph even more. Then Joseph had another dream. In this dream, Joseph saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing to him. This dream meant all of Joseph's family, his brothers, his mother, and his father would one day bow down to Joseph. Joseph's brothers were more jealous. Sometime later, Jacob sent Joseph to check on his brothers, who were tending to the sheep. When the brothers saw Joseph coming, they decided to kill him. But Joseph's oldest brother, Reuben, did not want to kill Joseph. Let's just throw him into a pit, he said. When Joseph arrived, the brothers took off Joseph's colorful robe and threw him into the pit. Then they saw a caravan of people heading to Egypt. They decided to sell Joseph to the travelers as a servant for 20 pieces of silver. The travelers took Joseph to Egypt. The brothers dipped Joseph's colorful robe into blood and took it back to their father. We found this robe, they said. Jacob recognized the robe. He believed a wild animal had killed Joseph, and he cried loudly because he thought his favorite son was dead. Joseph's brothers turned against him and tried to kill him, but God protected Joseph and used him as a part of his plan to rescue his family. In a similar way, people turned against God's son, Jesus. Jesus' death was God's plan to rescue sinners. I've always wanted to go to Egypt. If we didn't have a pandemic and I could travel anywhere, Egypt would definitely be at the top of my list. But I would want to choose to go. I wouldn't want to go like this. Hey, who are you guys? What's going on? No, no. And you know, neither 
did Joseph. Egypt was not in his plans. He was the favorite son in a prosperous family in Canaan, enjoying the promises of God and the love of his father when, boom, everything changed. Here is what I think is so cool about this story. In the story of Joseph, everyone makes bad, as in really stinky bad choices. Everyone feels upset. Everyone has angry feelings. Everyone says or does dumb things. But even though everyone messes up, God gets it right. It is wildly reassuring to me that God is at work and gets things right when Joseph's family is making a big, big mess of life. Because sometimes we all make a mess of life too. Now, think about our story and just consider these mistakes. First of all, there's Jacob, Joseph's dad, playing favorites. He gave Joseph a styling coat, and that made all his other sons really jealous. Now, everyone knows parents shouldn't play favorites, right? But Jacob loved Joseph best, and it upset his other sons. Well, then there's Joseph himself. That kid was a brat. In Genesis 37, verse 2, we read that he told on his brothers. The Bible says he gave a bad report to his dad about them. And then when he had those dreams about the grain and the stars bowing down, what did he say to his family? Behold, listen to my dream where I am awesome and you are not. Do you think Joseph knew this would possibly annoy them? Then we have Joseph's brothers. Most of them were happy to murder him. That's a lot of hatred. Well, thanks to Reuben, they, they dialed it back and just threw him into a pit. And then thanks to Judah, they just sold him into slavery instead of killing him. But then they all lied to their father, saying that an animal had eaten up their brother. What a crummy bunch of guys. And that's the crazy thing. God used an imperfect dad, a flawed brat, and a bunch of scheming brothers to bring about his plan to save the world. You're going to see how Joseph's unexpected and unwanted trip to Egypt ended up saving his family and millions more people. Go read Genesis 50, 20. It's okay to go to the end. The story does end well. You'll see that this whole mess was part of God's plan. Joseph's family survives a famine as a result of the bad decisions people made because God used the broken and messed up people for good. Ultimately, through this family, Jesus came into the world, the light of the world whose birth we've just celebrated. He came from this family. Joseph is going to be a rescuer, and later Jesus became the biggest and best rescuer of all time. So you can look at the bad behavior in this story, and you can thank God that he even uses human mistakes for good. That is how amazing, how powerful, and how cool he is. We don't always know what God is doing, but we can trust him. Now, this is not an excuse for behaving badly ourselves. Instead, we live good, loving lives where we forgive each other. We don't hold grudges like Joseph's brothers. And we don't play favorites like Jacob did either. And if we boast, we don't boast in ourselves like Joseph did. We only boast in Jesus. 
We live like this because it makes our amazing God happy. The God who works all things for your good and mine. The God who gave his only son for us. So, Happy New Year, boys and girls. In 2021, go out and live for Jesus. Wow, what an amazing story. Joseph's brothers did some pretty horrible stuff to him. When they decided to attack Joseph and sell him as a slave, Joseph probably felt really hurt and sad and angry. But even so, Joseph trusted God. God protected Joseph and used him as part of his big plan to help rescue his family. In the same way, people turned against God's son, Jesus. Jesus' death was God's plan to rescue sinners. We hope that you learned something about our big, strong, and mighty God today. Hey, boys and girls. Our key passage comes from the book of Hosea. Hosea was a prophet many years after Joseph lived, but his message pointed the Israelites to the truth that God is their only God and no one else could save them. This key passage also pointed forward to Jesus. Jesus is the Son of God, and He alone can save people from their sin. So here it is. Hosea 13, 4. I have been the Lord your God ever since you came out of Egypt. You shall acknowledge no God but me, no Savior except me. Good job. Let's do that one more time. Hosea 13, 4. I have been the Lord your God ever since you came out of Egypt. You shall acknowledge no God but me, no Savior except me. Well done, boys and girls. Now it's your time to practice at home. Hey Fellowship Kids, my name is Miss Pida and today I am going to be showing you how to make a craft of Joseph coat of many colors. Look how beautiful this coat is. I'm going to show you a step by step of what you need and how we're going to make this beautiful coat. I promise you it is very easy and you will enjoy making this craft. Now let's go and start making this coat. So you will need some colored paper which we're going to cut into small strips to make our beautiful Joseph coat. You will need some print glue and you will need a scissors. That's all we need for this craft. So here I have glued um, the little strips of colored paper on the white base paper. And as you can see, I tried to make it as colorful as possible. So here in the middle um, where I have the blue, so I will come here and do like a half moon to make the space for the neck. Now we need to do the arm. So the easier way is to fold in half and then you take it the neck down. You take your scissors and then you um, cut diagonal, like you're doing a triangle. And then once you're done with this side, we're going to do the bottom side because your arms need to move on your coat, right? And then you just go a little bit on the bottom here like so so you have some space for your arms fold it into half again you take your scissors and then so that we don't make a mistake you start from this end this corner here and then we want to try and come and meet at this corner here 
make sure that it's it's um straight on both sides and you cut like that and then you have joseph's coat of many colors <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed this craft thank you family see you next time bye god says in the bible that the glory of the lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea god loves the world and he desires that people from every country and every language would know him for the next few weeks we will learn about one of the nations that god loves today we'll learn about the uae what's your favorite part of living in the uae maybe it's the camels or the yummy dates on the palm trees for me it's all the beautiful people who live in the UAE. The UAE is home to almost 10 million people. And it's such a wonderful place because people from over 200 countries live here. People living in the UAE come from many different countries and backgrounds. Some of them love Jesus and follow him. Others have heard of him but they don't follow Jesus. Today, we are going to take some time to pray for the country that we love, the UAE. Jesus, thank you for this wonderful country that we live in. We pray that you would bless our leadership. We pray that our church would shine as a light and would bring glory to your name. And we pray that people who haven't heard would get to know about you in the UAE. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died, heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin, and let me as his child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. to our big picture question. Is there anything God can't do? What do you guys think? That's right, God can do all things according to his character. Good job, everybody. Thanks for joining us today, and we can't wait to see you next Friday for another episode of Children's Ministry Online. Goodbye. <laughs>